I didn't realise you were there. Just uh, practising a song that I've written. It's a beautiful song. Probably be played in a movie one day. Okay, firstly I'd like to wish both Natalie and Jenna a very happy birthday. And uh, also I'd like to say that I'm very sorry that I can't be there to help celebrate it. Nick and Karen have been very close friends of mine for nearly 30 years and along with Andrew the four of us have shared many experiences over that time. We've been through thick and thin, through all types of ups and downs and I feel very blessed to have been part of that foursome. So many times our lives have been more like a Seinfeld episode than real life. I've always suspected that Nick probably thought that uh, he was Jerry but uh, those of us who know Nick realise that he's actually our George Costanza. I'd also like to say that I've never liked Nick, and I can prove it. If you were to dig out Karen's 21st key and read it, it's there in black and white. Uh, I'd like to go back a, a little further and talk about how I met Karen. Before the days of mobile phones and personal computers, there was no emailing, there was no texting, there was no instant messages. Um, we all had CB radios, and so after school we'd go home and turn our CB radios on and we'd be chatting away, trying to meet some young ladies. Um, one afternoon a friend and I were talking on our CB and we were talking to these three young girls and uh, they described themselves as being very attractive. And um, so my friend and I did, decided to go and meet them. Um, I uh, made my way along the road. My friend had decided not to come along. He chickened out. And uh, there were these three young ladies. There was uh, Karen, there was Kathy Mayfield, now Kathy Carroll, and uh, another friend of theirs, Monique. And um, they were probably about 12 at the time. Uh, anyway, we, we met, um, you know, we had a few words and, and then I was off. Uh, but they left a lasting impression on me, as you can imagine. Um, anyway, it was probably not too long after that, you know, Nick arrived on the scene. He, um, you know, he was a mechanic, he had his greasy overalls on, he, he had a car, he had a three day growth, he probably only shaved that morning but he still had a three day growth and, and obviously, you know, I, I couldn't compete with that. Um, anyway, yeah, I was no match. Um, even so, you know, just jumping ahead, uh, I still didn't hesitate when I saved Nick's life earlier this year. We were up on Fraser Island and um, a couple of dingoes were attacking Nick and they were chasing him into shark infested waters. Um, I kicked off my crocs and I ran down the beach and I threw a stick at those dingoes and they ran away. I saved Nick's life that day um, and I'm glad I did. Anyway. A long time ago now, 21 years ago, my very good friends, Nick and Karen, had their first child. Uh, one morning, Nick rang me at the crack of dawn. And uh, obviously I, I didn't receive it too well to begin with, but then when he told me why he was ringing and uh, told me the good news, I was that excited that I, I couldn't get back to sleep. And so um, I went straight down to the hospital. Uh, Karen was there, Natalie in her arms, uh, Nick was there. Natalie hadn't even had her first bath at that point, so I saw her when she was very young. Um, and I think, you know, maybe that's one of the reasons she's very special. You know, she is the um, she was the the firstborn out of all of my close friends. And um, Andrew and I bought a gift for Natalie, and uh, it was Andrew's idea. He was. He was always very thoughtful, especially where friends were concerned. And uh, to get this gift into Natalie's bedroom, we had to act with military precision. Uh, at that time, Nick's mother, Norma, was looking after the house. And um, we popped around to visit. And I was distracting her while Andrew went and got her keys, and got the house key off, climbed out through a window, went down to the local hardware, got another key cut and came back, climbed through the window and uh, back inside again. And uh, all this probably took about 20 minutes. And I was there, you know, talking to Norma all that time, trying to, um, hoping that she didn't notice that Andrew had left the room. And uh, anyway, he came back in, gave me the nod. We said our goodbyes and we were off. Later that night, we came in uh, with the key 
and we set up the cradle in Natalie's bedroom. And, um, you know, we put uh, all the linen on, the mattress, all that sort of stuff, and it looked absolutely beautiful. Um, Andrew recorded, like I said, Andrew's very thoughtful. He, he recorded a song, um, Little Ray of Sunshine, and uh, he had it ready in the, in the cassette recorder so that when Nick and Karen came home, they could just press play and, uh, and listen to this beautiful song. And uh, anyway, as we were leaving, Andrew changed his mind and uh, he went and got the tape out and took it with him. And uh, it was because I think he decided that, you know, he'd like to have a daughter one day and he was going to save it for her. I'm not sure if Alex, who was born a couple of years after that, has ever actually heard that song. But uh, anyway, he took it with him. Um, Uh, Natalie, of course, has always been my favourite of all the Sarkis children. I, I never really liked any of the others. Um, I did have to save Jenna once. Though. I remember Mitchell, who obviously was just, you know, fooling around. Um, I saw him standing near Jenna. Jenna was on the ground and, um, you know, just crawling along there. Nick was working in the yard. And uh, I just saw Mitchell looking around to see if anyone was looking. And then he just went bang on the ground. And he stomped on Jenna, and um, yeah, she started crying. I went over and uh, and just got between them, and uh, you know, I said to Nick, "Oh, look, Mitchell just you know, stomped on Jenna." And Nick came racing over and was scolding Mitchell. He says, "How dare you tread on?" And he was hesitating for a few seconds. He said, "The baby," and then I realised he, he couldn't remember Jenna's name. And, um, you know, I suppose that comes from having so many children. You forget their names sometimes. And, and I know that, you know, for many years there, when Nick was going to university three nights a week, the children used to refer to him as Mr Sarkis. I'm not sure if they realised he was their father for a while there. Um, Ryan, uh, I'm going to save any good stories about you for your 18th. And um, they might have something to do with your care for skiing abilities. Um, obviously Nick and Karen are very dear friends to mine and their ch children have all been very special to me. I hope that the kids can be good role models to Nick and Karen just as Nick and Karen have been good role models to their parents. That of course will make a lot more sense to anyone who heard Nick's speech last week. I really am sad that I can't be there in person tonight but I'm currently in Threadbow taking part in the World Masters Skiing Championships. Not many people knew about this. I like to keep these things to myself. Very bad timing and I, I hope to see you all again very soon. I'm sure to read about this party in the Manly Daily, as the police usually turn up to all Saki's parties these days. Some, neighbor, some neighbours just have no sense of humour. Whatever you do, don't let them see Uncle Phil. OK, back to the slopes for me, but uh, first, I'd like to introduce one of their favourite uncles, Natalie's godfather, Paul Hegarty, to propose a toast in her honour. Happy birthday, girls. Thank you.